Okay, so let's take a look at uh, chapter five, uh, looping. And so we'll have uh, all sorts of fun things to play with here with while loop, for loops. So uh, as uh, as you take a look at this, you'll notice uh, right away that at the very top, uh, the header for the module says only one week. So we have a few chapters where we're only going to uh, have one week to be able to uh, you know get everything done and then move on to the next chapter. And this is one. Uh, and there'll be a couple others later on this semester too. So uh, after doing... Uh, you know, decision structures and doing, you know, if statements, uh, you'll find that the uh, looping actually goes pretty quickly. So this is a good good chapter to kind of squeeze it all into into a week. So um, I don't think uh, you have any, any troubles with it. So anyway, as we take a look at this, you'll see some assignments in here. You, uh, you know, you've got the my programming lab stuff, and then uh, there are a few programming assignments. Uh, uh, one of these also has a video that goes down uh, with it as well. And then you have a couple videos here from, uh, well, a few videos, but these two especially from our author that you could you can check out uh, but uh, I wanted to just point out just a couple of things really quickly and I, I know you probably haven't taken a look at this yet but um, maybe come back to this after you've you've uh, started taking a look at it but uh, I just wanted to show some of the some of the common uh, loop errors that I see so you see some different things I mean this one's kind of self-explanatory as, as you come back and take a look so don't put a semicolon after the condition um, and uh, don't forget the braces. So you're going to be using curly braces. So, you know, here, here's an example of one, but this is uh, done correctly with your curly braces here. So you can see those uh, are missing in this one. Uh, and I just wanted to point out that if you're coming from Python, if you if you uh, have taken CIS2 and, and uh, you've taken a Python class, uh, then what ends up happening is you, you know, in, in Python, this would be totally okay. I mean, obviously a different, different uh, statement that you use here it looks a little bit different but um but anything that was indented would as long as it was it was the same then it would just keep going but if you forget the curly brace what ends up happening is um the it only works with the first line so the first uh, statement after the 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 while loop starts here so we've got this little statement here and then we come down here and it would do the c out but then this would not work so it's not in the loop body and he ends up with all sorts of problems the other uh, really common thing that i see is uh, with the equal sign so remember if we are saying like this right here um while and then you can see this uh, particular part of the statement here so while the remainder equals one so that's our argument here but remember when there's only one equal sign this is our assignment operator so this is saying remainder is equal to one it's being set to one assign one to this particular variable so this will always be true um, which causes all sorts of problems so instead you would use two equal signs that's your um, compare so uh, when it says hey uh, while remainder equals one you want to have two equal signs uh, here instead of one so those are just some common uh, common little things that you'll see so once you taken a look at this is slide 10 by the way in the PowerPoint uh, and there are a lot of links in here um, and and uh, while I'm talking about links I wanted to also show you this just really quickly um, one of the limitations that we have with Python Tutor and I know a lot of you are using a, a REPL or REPL however you want to say it uh, but we have uh, Python Tutor is still available for this. Now, again, I mean, you can see, you know, Philip has uh, experimental here, uh, and it only works for some things. But this is one case, and we'll use it especially next uh, chapter with functions too, to be able to follow where things are going. But if you're trying to walk through a loop, and this is the first little sample program that they give you, uh, and you can see it has 19 steps. As long as we're not asking for an input from the user, you can run this in Python uh, tutor in the visualizer and it will work for our C++ code. So if you're taking an input, if you're asking the user for an input, you know, like enter a number between one and a hundred, you'll see you later for a game. Uh, you know, you've got to, you can't use it there. It has to be hard coded. So this one doesn't have any inputs from the user. So it will walk through. So if I walk through this and you can see the counter set at one and it goes through here and it, you know, and it prints hello and then it's going to keep going here. It's going to say, okay, is it less than five? Well, yeah, it's now it's equal to two because we added one there and it's going to keep rolling through. So it gives you, uh, you know, a little um, visualizer. Ah, uh, duh, Python Tutor, you know, visualizer, it's good stuff. Uh, and you can just walk through this and it will show you kind of where it's at, what the values are in here. And then when you'll see in this one when it gets done, and you know, it has this little, that's all piece right here. And, uh, and that's basically it. So, um, but as we're adding more and more information, you'll see there'll be different things that will uh, appear down here. You can follow uh, you know, where things are going, how it's working with the loops, uh, if you've got nested, if you've got all sorts of different things going on, uh, this is a really good uh, way to see what's happening behind the scenes of the code. So don't forget about Python Tutor as you are uh, working this week. All right, have fun.